The constants of nature aren't constant. In physics, you'll often hear people talk about constants, as if they have some universal transcendental meaning. And in a sense, they do. The physical constants, as we call them, seem to be truly fixed and universal in normal, everyday conditions. But it turns out that these mysterious numbers change depending on how you measure them. For the sake of concreteness, let's take the fine structure constant, which is a number that controls the electron's charge. At low energies, we measure this number to be roughly 1 divided by 137. However, at the energy scales where particle colliders operated in the 80s, this number is roughly 1 divided by 127. So why does this happen? It turns out it's because of the way we think of charges. We think of charge as something that can be measured independent of a system's surroundings, rather than as something that is influenced by the very field that it causes. This property of a thing changing its own behavior is present even in classical physics, but it gets turned up to 11 when we talk about quantum systems. Now, the way that we might measure the strength of an electron's charge is by shooting other things at it and seeing how strongly they repel each other. But depending on the energy of the projectile, the distance it will get from the electron varies, and that, it turns out, affects the measured charge. Now, what I'm about to tell you is a bit of a lie, because virtual particles don't exist, but it's still a nice way to think about it, so bear with me. When we fire the projectile at the electron, the force between the two is communicated by virtual photons. However, virtual photons can in turn interact with the electron-positron field. This process is called vacuum polarization. The photon turns into a virtual electron-positron pair. But that pair now also feels the electric charge of the original electron, and so it orients itself accordingly. The virtual positron is closer to the real electron, and the virtual electron is further from the real electron. This partially counteracts the electric field that would otherwise be present. So the end result is that there are shells of virtual electron-positron pairs surrounding the electron, reducing the observed electric field around the electron. The further an object is from the electron, the more of these shells it sees, and thus the less electric field it sees, as the shells partially cancel out the electric field. As the projectile gets closer, though, it sees more of the true field, as the electron is not screened by the virtual particle pairs. As the electric field is observed to be larger, the projectile feels a stronger force, and thus we measure a larger electric charge. And you can't separate the electron from its vacuum polarization, so this is not something that we should treat as separate from the true charge of the electron. This vacuum polarization effect is intrinsic to the electron itself, and hence it's reasonable to say that the electron's charge changes depending on the energy you measure it with. By the way, even though I lied by using virtual particles in this description, all of this still basically goes through if every time I say virtual electron you just replace it with electron field. It's just harder to visualize.